Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Corridor Easy for Civil 3D webinar. We're very excited to have the uh, some of the team from Civil Survey Applications showing you guys the Corridor Easy uh, tool here, and uh, we're just very excited to get into it and, and show you guys what this thing can do. So, uh, Ryan, can I have you jump over to that next slide for me? All right, perfect. So just some housekeeping real quick before we go ahead and get started. Uh, all attendee lines will be muted for the duration of the presentation. Uh, if you do have questions, feel free to send those over in the questions box or the chat box uh, throughout the presentation, and we will have some time for questions at the end where we will take those and, and answer them. The webcast will be recorded, and if you're registered for this webinar, you will be receiving that recording after the webinar, but you can also find it on our website and our YouTube page. Um, and lastly, any questions, concerns, anything of that nature, you can give us a call at 305-445-6480 or shoot us an email at info at ddscad.com. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and jump to that next slide. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and introduce Alex here. He's going to—he's the uh, Director of Sales at Civil Survey Applications, and he'll go ahead and kick us off here. Go ahead, Alex. Great. Hey, thanks, Alan. Appreciate the time here today. We've got some really exciting stuff to show the folks. Uh, in fact, we'll be focusing on one particular thing for most of the presentation that really adds 10 to 20 times the productivity to your existing uh, Civil 3D today. So very excited to show that. And uh, my, my background here, uh, I look after sales here at Civil Survey Applications, but I've been in the AEC industry, software industry, for over 25 years uh, doing Different main companies, worked for Autodesk for 18 years, uh, Softdesk before that, so mostly in the civil space. Uh, and I know a lot of you uh, from different presentations in the past. So um, other than that, uh, I've been involved with Civil 3D at Autodesk for a long time, but you know, it really saw an opportunity here to add some productivity to it. And that's why uh, I, I was intrigued to join Civil Survey Applications. Um, but with that, I want to go to the next slide. And I want to introduce the guy who's going to be doing the heavy lifting on this presentation today, Ryan Caudell. He's, he's one of our application engineers, and he's uh, also got many years of AEC technology uh, experience and uh, been in the civil petroleum gas industries for many years, done land and roadway projects. So he's well diversified, even airports as well. So you can see in the uh, bottom paragraph all the different things he has done. So he's going to lead us through and uh, I'll do a little co color commentary uh, when needed here. Next slide. So here's the agenda for today. I'm going to do a quick overview of civil survey applications and our product corridor easy. And then I will turn it over to Ryan for the demonstration. Then I'm going to talk about a, a special opportunity. Uh, we call it the corridor easy challenge that you could actually win uh, a product uh, of corridor easy subscription for one year and one per company. And uh, it's uh, just all you have to do is go and try it. Uh, I'll, we'll talk about it in a moment here, but uh, that's where the, we'll get the details of how you can win that. Uh, and then we also have a special promo being offered between us and uh, digital uh, design drafting. Uh, and it's a special pricing just for the attendees here today. So we'll talk about that. All right, that's at the end. Next slide. So we are a company of three main products, uh, and that's Corridor Easy for Civil 3D, which came out in, from our product called Civil Site Design. So it's been out for many, many years. It's not a brand new product for uh, Civil Site Design. It's been around for a long time. We pulled out Corridor Easy once we got the AI technology and the machine learning built into it, because we, we heard from a lot of people that they were having trouble with corridors. And this is really a way, that's why we call corridor easy, to simplify the whole corridor design process. So that came out of civil site design. And then for surveyors, we have a product called Stringer Topo. Also, we're very proud that Autodesk, uh, we are an Autodesk authorized developer, but also Autodesk 
has uh, approved our product to be up on their new app store. So you can download it from their app store and you got the 30 day trial uh, and, and uh, it's been certified by them that uh, it meets their qualifications. So one last thing here, I, one of our good customers, Rhonda Hurst uh, in Texas, Icon Engineering, uh, she was the one of the ones, the early ones that really told us the, the problems she was having with the work coming in and can't find or hire the people that they need. So they needed to, to get more out of what they had in use today with the people that they had uh, and the software they already had. So that's where Core or Easy really made a difference for her. So we do actually have a video of that. You can hear uh, that's up on our site. Next slide. So I mentioned the one thing. So you're going to hear a lot from Ryan today on the big tool, which we call is Project Assist, which is the AI engine for Quarter Easy. Uh, it's also in civil site design too, because as I said, it kind of came from that. But it really works with your alignments, builds out your roads, curbs, curb returns, turning lanes, medians, cul-de-sacs, all those different things automatically for you. So you can see from the comment here that one of our uh, our customers here provided, Russ Nick Lloyd, uh, Nick Lloyd I should say, and uh, he was you know he said he loves the speed of it, so he can you know do a number of different uh, layouts and options for his clients in a fraction of the time just to do one option. So that's the power in some maybe in the preliminary design that you can do with this by using the AI tool. So AI is a powerful thing and something we will be leveraging going forward more than what we see here today. Next slide. So today we're gonna focus on showing you how this product can really help you increase your design productivity using the existing civil 3D settings and resources that you have today. The number one thing we heard at Autodesk University this year when we were there was, I can't find and hire people that uh, to, to use it. We, we would hire, we got projects coming in. I just can't find the people with the domain expertise and they also know Civil 3D. So what we're suggesting offering is by adding quarter easy, keep the folks that you have and just get more productivity out of what you have by using this tool if you're doing subdivision uh, type design road network. So with this here, you're going to see how we can do a whole subdivision uh, with uh, the roads and the curb returns with a single mouse click. And then some really cool tools that we've also added, like to take an alignment uh, and do a cut and fill balance to close to zero uh, in, in this product as well. And then what's exciting is that we have a built-in 3D model viewer. So that allows you to work with your model, rotate it around, move it around, and, and also see where, hey, maybe the design is missing a couple things here. Uh, I've got to go back and correct it. So the model viewer comes with Corridor Easy. It's part of the software. Next slide. And uh, you'll see Ryan take you through how it uses all the same tools and it's 100% compatible with Civil 3D. So you're getting you know, all the things like your cross-section profiles, all the different things. Uh, will be uh, just like your it's their civil 3D commands, and that's what we're using. Now, one thing that Autodesk asked us to do when we got up on their app store is make our whole product 4K compliant. So all of our dialog boxes and that now will, if you've got a, or you're going to get a 4K monitor down the road, uh, works perfect with that. Next slide. Now, to help you learn uh, and use this product we have a youtube channel and that's where corridor easy learning series that are all free to go through and view and and, uh, and then we also have folks uh ryan included that can help you get up to speed and we'll give you some definitely mentoring not there for full training but to to guide you along get you off the right start because it is fairly easy remember it's just an add-on to civil 3d here next slide all right, this is where I'll turn it over now to Ryan, and he's gonna take you through the demonstration, and I'll come back and uh, talk about a little bit of the promos. Ryan? Thank you, uh, thank you, Alex. Um, 
Hi, everybody. Well, I want to start going over um, kind of the layout of Corridor EZ. So uh, when you get it installed, uh, you will end up with a tool space here on the right side. And the tool space is very similar to uh, how Civil 3D's tool space operates. Uh, you have a, a top to bottom workflow uh, that we'll be, we'll be exploring through this uh, demonstration. Uh, but really I wanted to note out is we've got two tabs here on the, uh, on the you know, in my case on the left side here, we got corridor easy data, and then underneath that is a getting started uh, tab. So once you get uh, corridor easy installed, you can go right into this getting started tab. There is a folder data set that you can just click on and it, it'll take you right to a data set that should be should pretty much resemble what you see here on the screen. And you've got different e-learning video uh, buttons that kind of work you right through the workflow as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so back to the tool space. So this is going to be added to Civil 3D and you will also get a corridor easy ribbon uh, menu as well. So there's a few extra tools in here, but really your primary tools are going to be found uh, a right click away. So uh, starting really with the top, we've got uh, tutorials. Uh, actually, that's the name of your file. So I want to right click on that. You've got your drawing settings and also within the drawing settings are going to be the design settings that you would look for, you know, K values and things like that, you would apply to vertical curves and radiuses and all your defaults would be uh, within this one dialog box here. So it's a lot to cover, but just to let you see that this is where you can go to set things up. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can also set up your civil 3D styles. Uh, and these are your custom styles right in with the software too so as it's generating new geometry and which is civil 3d geometry such as alignments uh, it will be utilizing the styles that you have in your current template again we got some tool space settings some data packing uh, this software uh, corridor easy uh, to to bring speed to your work it reads and writes to an external database and all that is sort of tucked away in the uh, user temp directory. And when, when you save the drawing and you close out, all that data gets saved back into your drawing file so that you have it all packed together. Uh, and like I said, that's really where all your road connections, all that data is, is, is being stored. Uh, at the end, when you close a drawing, it all gets packed back up. So that's what the pack settings are rebuild. Uh, the last one I really want to point out is there, there are a lot of other third party applications that bring in imagery. Um, this is uh, Google imagery and this is also a Bing imagery, even though we get Bing imagery already with Autodesk, the larger the, the imagery is, the more, uh, I would say, granular it gets. You start, you know, it gets a little fuzzy. So uh, with this option here, you can bring an imagery to uh, out of Corridor EZ. So that could be a subscription that you decide that you don't need. If you're just bringing an imagery, you can utilize uh, the tool right out of Corridor EZ. So the next thing to look at would be, um, you know, let's look at a, alignments real quick. So the alignments that you're seeing in the list here are the exact same alignments that you would find in uh, your Civil 3D. All right, we just don't have any kind of cool hovering to see what these are. But if I was to create a new alignment in Civil 3D, I can go and click on the refresh button. It would add it into the list of alignments that I currently have. So, uh, so that just kind of tells you we're dealing with Civil 3D geometry. Also, if I hover my cursor, you'll see that's pulling uh, a civil 3D surface as well. So you're really starting a file using Corridor Easy with a civil 3D surface and alignments, which are civil 3D. Templates. 
So we have a library of templates that uh, load up and you can now just, you know, right click on a template and go to edit template. Uh, this, this right clicking on a specific template and opening up the window and it giving you the template that you want to edit is really kind of a new concept with Corridor Easy because we, you know, all the, again, like Alex was telling you, the information, uh, these tools came from an existing software, civil site design. And so there was a time that you would actually have to open this up and then select your template this way. You would have to go and then pick what you wanted to edit. And that was really kind of time consuming. Now you can literally go to any template you want, right click on it in the list and edit, it takes you right to it. So this is really a pretty an awesome uh, contextual uh, feature. And if I was to go back and visit my 24 foot, we can definitely dig into this pretty deep. So I'm gonna to try to avoid that on a, on a quick uh, webinar, but you basically have this broken up in a couple of areas. We have a, a left side of our design, a right side of our design, uh, starting off uh, with the center line and then working outward. So you can see that the first leg is your, is your pavement width, the slope, and then we've got these little nifty codes, just like you would run into with Civil 3D. We got like pave one code, stuff like that. You also have codes here and you'll see how they work with the software. Uh, some other things that you can do is right click and we can also edit, you know, sections and that's how you can pick up your depths and what kind of materials that you're working with. So very involved, uh, a lot of stuff you can do in here. Be aware to look for these little video icons. These little video icons is what's going to really give you a jump start into the functionality of that dialogue. Okay, so you can see I just right clicked and I got in there and I can explore more, you know, before I use it. All right, so we've got the templates. The, uh, now we got our alignments to look at. What I want to do is uh, just so you can see the interaction between two roads before we get to just building it all out, because it's pretty awesome when you can build it all out. But if you want to understand how everything kind of links together and how it's dynamic, um, it's best to just experiment with, uh, with two roads here. So I'm going to start with Marin. Marin Street, I'm just right clicking again. You can see that I can create a road. And I'm just going to use that template I showed you earlier. And it, it's pulling the civil 3D surface here. Uh, I'm not really making any changes. I'm just going to accept everything that it's given me. And so it has applied that template. Um, and it the software's done a best fit profile for me as well. So it's kind of determined based on the natural terrain, you know, this is how it's grading out your design. From here, you can do a full design. So a lot of times civil 3D users are familiar with seeing a form like this, where they can go in and, you know, put in the distance or you know, basically your station value, your elevations, your slopes. Uh, there's also tools down at the bottom that you can, used to add more uh, PVIs and to build this out further. But again, if you look over here at the bottom, you got a video button. So if you want to know what all you can do in here, click on this button and explore e-learning. Uh, even within this profile window that you're looking at, there is also an e-learning button here. So if you just look around, you can find these buttons and it's going to help you uh, really understand what's going on. So if I go in and I uh, raise and lower the road, so I'm just doing it sort of as a grip edit. As soon as I click that, I want you to see that in the plan, it's already modified the uh, your daylighting here. So if I go back and I lower it, you know, the daylighting came in. Uh, another way of looking at this is with the model viewer. So I've got line work, but I don't actually have the surface defined yet. So what I can do is go ahead and uh, 
do a rebuild all, there's my surface. So just with a click, I was able to basically just rebuild uh, what we call a, the default surface is total model. So it just re, rebuilt the total model. So if I go ahead and explore that in the model viewer, I can go ahead and say, yeah, that's the model I want to use. That's the, the surface I want to use. It's going to do it with brass. If I want to use my imagery as the existing surface, I'll go ahead and uh, let me close that. Let me set my uh, existing. I want to get it from image from the drawing. Use the picker. Zoom out. Select it. All right, so and now we're looking at that road. So again, just by me grip editing this road, you see it's already reflecting the change in the model uh, viewer. So let's add some more to this. I'm going to go ahead and kind of close out of the model viewer and I'm going to close out of my profile window. And we are going to now do another street just so you can see how that comes together. So we are looking at uh, Sydney Court. Go ahead and create that road. So now we got two roads. Uh, some other things to look at in here is uh, if you wanted to balance a road out with cut and fill, uh, we have a tool here where you can say, yeah, I want zero cut and zero fill along this road. You can also define this by stationing if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So it now made an adjustment. And then if I wanted to see what the volume is on this road, you can see that the volume got me back down to like a 0 0.07. Um, but you can see, you know, section by section what your volumes are doing. You can also see uh, the stripping, the pavement. So you got that quantity here. You can also do the material totals. So now I can actually see in more detail where my concrete is, you know, what my base materials are, you know, on that road. And you can also click all roads and you can get that information for all your roads. So really handy uh, volume uh, tool here. All right. So now that we've got this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort of bring this down. So this gets a little, a little more acrobatic because I'm trying to look at two roads. And really, before I get going, let me go ahead and get a curb return in. And just sake of time, I'll go ahead and just push, a, I'm going to just do the uh, auto curb returns. So it wants me to close this window down first. OK, so let's go back. I'll put in my radius that I want to use. And you can see just, just like that, it's already cut in that, that curve return. So if I want to look at that in the model viewer, I'm seeing what that looks like here. In the model viewer, I can, again, right click even on this road and open up the profile. And so this red line, this vertical line indicates where my intersection is. So say if I start to alter this road's depth here, uh, say if I raise the elevation up, now you see how I just updated that whole intersection. So I can also right click in the viewer and I got even my cross section of the road. And it's the same thing if I decide to raise and lower, you see it's also raising and lowering the road in the section. So really, really powerful feedback on your design. I'm gonna kind of close those out. So now that you're, get, you're, you're kind of getting the idea, the picture that, okay, I quickly threw two best fit road designs in there. I quickly threw an intersection in. If I need to adjust my main road, it's affecting my side roads and keeping my intersection intersection uh, intersections linked um, now let's look at this in more of a grand scheme you know of this entire project 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove the data. So we quickly delete the data and start fresh. So you see that we have a drawing with alignments, but some of these alignments are named specifically with widening or you know bus bay. So we got a bus bay here, uh, or we got a right turn lane here. And you see that I've got turning lane in the name of my alignment. We got an island over here. So with it, it where the cul-de-sacs are, I don't have any alignments. The software will create the alignment for me and then design that out for me. So um, so I don't need them. What I have done is I've stopped my alignment to the center line of the road right where my curb return would match uh, as it's going around the cul-de-sac. So that's kind of the, the key to making that stop at the right, right location. So we're going to go ahead and jump into Project Assist. And Project Assist is going to generate a report, um, a workflow. Uh, in the order that it created the model. So I could put in whatever information I want, put my project. I can give some information about the project. I can put in my initials. <coughs> it has found two surfaces now because I have the total model. And then I've got uh, 16 alignments that it's going to analyze. Now my sampled surface is still going to be the existing surface and I'm choosing to have my report open up when it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. So this is really the AI engine right here. So uh, we, we talk a lot about AI. Uh, what this is doing is the software looks at each uh, alignment name and based on trigger words that you decide to use, it will then uh, map it to the correct design that it's going to need to do so that you end up with a, with a good model. So if you're, if you're kind of looking at this, I've got Allen Road, I've got the Lawn Street, uh, Marin Street. You'll notice that all my streets are in blue. And then I can easily see that in green are my existing road edge connections here. And I can see here what it's going to do, existing road edge, edge control. And then all my widenings are in this sort of, uh, you know, beige. So I can see that those are going to be road edge controls. And then you got your island. So I have island in the name and it knows to map it to island. You can call it whatever you want. If you don't want it to be island, you call it median. Uh, whatever you choose, the software will remember that in the future. So as long as you're using these little trigger words um, and you're consistent with it, uh, you don't even really need to be consistent with it. It will start to develop an understanding on, on how you call what you call your alignments and how it needs to use it. So I don't really have to make any changes here at this point. It already has determined how I what I call my alignments and how I use them. And these are the different types of alignments that you can choose. So, you know, road stream, road edge connection, footpath for sidewalks, salt cut, boundaries. So a lot of different things that you can do. You can even choose nothing if you don't want to use it in the design at all. I'm going to go ahead and confirm. And so now we're working from the top down. So it's taking each alignment and going alphabetical order. As we get to DeLon, you can see that that's DeLon Street right there. Uh, there's quite a few alignments that somewhat parallel it. So it this workflow, it's been determined that these are really kind of linked to the main road. And so we can choose how we want to design each of these pieces. So say, for example, we got a bus bay. So what do I, what do I want to do with the bus bay? Uh, right now, it's horizontal control and maintaining the cross fault. So it's taking the roads template and then targeting this bus bay uh, by stretching it. Or we can also choose to have it have a different vertical control on it, separate, that we can control the horizontal and vertical. Or we can also 
do that and apply a template to it. So you've got basically three different ways that you can design uh, what you're trying to achieve here with the with this bus bay. So I'm just going to try to get myself in a pretty good position where you can kind of see some things happening when we get ready to run it. Uh, Allen Street. Allen Street does have a cul-de-sac at the end, so I'm going to tick box that I want a cul-de-sac at the end. And Sydney Court also has a cul-de-sac at the end. So uh, again, alphabetical order. I'm scrolling down to get to Sydney Court. There it is. I want to tick box Sydney Court. You can apply a cul-de-sac at the start, at the end, or at both ends, depending on what you know type of configuration you have on your alignment. And then as we get to the bottom, it's just going to treat the road edge connections. It's going to tie them back as an intersection. It's uh, going to use the island and it's going to drape it to a model. So it's creating a model. So we're, we're already getting the first model, which is total model. Total model is a, a default model that Corridor Easy makes to tie all the rows together. There's some other elements that turn it into being a, uh, a design model at the end. And then the design model is going to be used as a draping surface for your islands. So that's how that works there. Now, standard actions, what kind of curve returns do I want? I'm going to stick with 30. If you want to have all your roads crowned, like in Civil 3D, you're doing the intersection wizard and you have the option to do all crowned roads. <clears throat> That's the same as tick boxing this. Uh, it kind of jumps on me here. Let's see. Tick boxing, create all curve returns as saddles. So saddles is also the same kind of term as, as uh, crowned roads. So uh, we can take that and even do all of them, but we can also pick and choose where we need them. So say if I want to just get this one intersection, I'm just going to apply an all crown intersection at that location. And at the end, we are down to adding a plugin. So if I do want the model viewer to open up, I can use that as a plugin, add that action. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and use the uh, image from from my uh, drawing, I'm going to go ahead and pick it out just so it has it there. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and compute. And this is, I'm going to try to talk through everything it's doing, but it, it happens pretty quick. Uh, once I hit compute, it's going to run through this workflow and it's going to start applying a, a road template to each road. Uh, and then it's going to start looking at, as you can see here, it got in all the widenings uh, from the paralleling alignments. It's then gone through and cut in all the intersections. Over here, if you look at it, it's actually taking the edge of the road and it's pulling the edge and that intersection is pulling the edge to match the, the crown road. So that's how it's creating a crown road at this location here. Uh, <clears throat> it looks like it's already built out the uh, third, you know, well, the second surface. You see there's a couple of surfaces being developed uh, and it's draping in the island. And really the last step you're gonna see in here is that an, an alignment's gonna form your cul-de-sac and then it's gonna apply, you know, a template to it and then cut it into your road. So you just saw it do all of that. And you can imagine how quick this is when, when you don't go over it in slow motion. I mean, it's a, a few clicks and, you know, probably under a minute, you know, you, you just kicked all this information out. Now, we will take a look at the cul-de-sac just so you can kind of see some additional tools there. Uh, the report did show up on my other screen. There we are. So now you, now you can actually see uh, all the roads put in. The other thing I really like about the model uh, viewer is that it puts labels in there for you so you can actually see what your uh, your roads are. 
again, you have the right click menus in here. So you can do stuff like adding a water drop even within this viewer. So I can see that I got a low spot over here all the way down. Um, we can go into, you know, toggle display, contours, and maybe I want to see the contours on for, you know, my uh, design model and island. So I can turn that on. So now I can see all my contours in the design. Uh, you can control the exaggeration. If it's too flat, you can go ahead and set it to a different exaggeration. There's just a lot of power that you can do within the model viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and close the model viewer out. Now for the surfaces that we've got, uh, we've got quite a few surfaces in here. If I pick on my surface, this is with Island. So maybe that one I want to see. Um, we can turn on the, uh, the triangles. So I can see exactly how the tin is being formed. If I go back and pick on it, I'll turn the triangles off. And then I can go back and click. Um, and we can do, again, the water drop even in the plan here, which this water drop is quite different. You see, this one's like a dynamic water drop. So anywhere you move your cursor, it's telling you where the flow from high to low point is. So really, really cool um, option there. And uh, looking at time here. So now that we've got this data, I did say I wanted to show you at least the cul-de-sac. So when we get into the cul-de-sac, you see, we've got two cul-de-sacs. This is the one I want to go and do an edit cul-de-sac. And I just want you all to see, these are the kind of controls you have when you're designing out a cul-de-sac. So you can actually pick the incoming uh, road that you're tying to. Uh, the attachment point is at the end. And this is the code that I told you kind of toward the beginning and somewhat brief on the template side. And I say, hey, these are the codes. Uh, the software looks for at least edge of travel way etw code and that's how it knows how to cut things in there and cut your intersection so etw is one of those really uh sort of a, a core uh code that's used for really cutting out your intersections cul-de-sacs knuckles that kind of thing uh different types of arrangements you can do including you can use your own alignment on your cul-de-sacs so the got a really challenging cul-de-sac a lot of times someone will create their own alignment and then they'll just assign it uh, you know by picking it here so um, over on the right is the design of the vertical and we can also show what that looks like in the VGE so this is sort of how it designed it it did like an auto design up and in going into the cul-de-sac uh, it's easy to actually take all this stuff out but it's doing a, a, a negative two percent from your road going into the cul-de-sac and it's maintaining that that negative two percent until it hits the edge so that's what you're seeing with the design there um, in the houston area we actually just take these out and then we can design our own our own uh cul-de-sac around it all right so it's time to get everything into civil 3d so the first thing that we want to look at, and, and this is really nice here, uh, the way this is packaged up at the bottom, we just ran project assist. The second icon over is going to be converting the surface into a civil 3D surface. So I'm going to go ahead and use that, that next. So you can pick and choose what out of the three surfaces this created, what uh, surface that you want to use. So maybe I want my top surface. To be the uh, with island i'm going to go ahead and just turn off all of the uh, automatic boundary settings here all right so so now i can see that i've got my civil 3d surface so we now go go through the old object viewer to look at that one you know so a really clean surface for somebody that may not really know what they're doing, they just need to know how to click some buttons 
uh, to get it started. It's just really a great, a great tool. The uh, next thing is uh, we need to export all the profiles that were created in this process. These are civil 3D profiles. So if I go in and I click on my profiles, it's using my styles. Um, I can choose which ones I want to create. I'm just going to drop them all in. I'm going to go ahead and set a location where I want my profiles to start. And uh, from here, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to create and update profiles. And there you go. You see that it's basically every single alignment in here, which is all your curve return alignments, your cul de sac alignments that it used, and then all the alignments that you brought to the table are now populated out in civil 3D profile. So I can then go in, you know, you can grip edit, make changes, and you can actually go back and you can push the change back over into uh, civil, I say civil site design slash corridor EZ. So with a click, you can, you can actually push it back over. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is look at The corridor. That's really what everyone likes to see is the corridor. So I kind of zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, that's probably good enough. So with the corridor, I'm going to right click on my corridors and do a create corridor. So again, that top to bottom, we're at the bottom now. So create corridor. Uh, so I can give it a name. I can choose what model that I want to base the corridor off of. I'm just going to go with the design model. And then we have these conversion settings. So this is really how it ties back to your uh, to Civil 3D's sub-assemblies. So when we look at the road, the road uses a ETW code at the end. <laughs> and then you can select an assembly, sub-assembly, uh, different from the lane super elevated AOR, which is the default right now. So I can actually click in here. You can go in and, and, and pick out, uh, you know, pretty much whatever you're trying to do within the library of Civil 3D. So you can go in here and you can pick whatever pavement option you want and replace it if you needed to. Same thing with curve and gutter. There's three different codes to that. And in the process, um, it is going to be using the urban curve and gutter general. And then there are some formulas that have been uh, implemented in the process. This is more, I would say, kind of advanced level. Uh, when you go in here, you can actually see dimension C and dimension E and G. That's going to be familiar with somebody that's doing uh, dealing with the sub assembly because Autodesk just gives us dimensions and we have to go to the help and figure out what they are. But we're utilizing those to build out the uh, curb uh, in Civil's uh, corridor easy. All right, so, but all of this is default. You don't have to build any of this out. You can actually just run with the defaults. They they work out pretty well. So, if you had your own custom uh, packet file, you can import a packet file here. So just be aware that you can do a custom one as well. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to uh, create the uh, corridor. And then as it's sort of reviewing the information, I'm waiting for it to ask me to place the assemblies that it's putting together for me. The, uh, now you can start seeing some of the offsetting going on inside. They, the assemblies are broken up by the regions. So uh, it can be an advantage or a disadvantage. It just depends uh, on the preference but uh, of, the, of the designer. But if you have a design that you're doing and you need to tweak something related to you know, one area, you can actually find that assembly and tweak the assembly if you wanted to uh, for that region and it won't impact any other area of your design. And anything that you're trying to do, uh, any major work that you're trying to do, continue to do that in corridor easy. And then there is a, 
a synchronized button here on the right at the bottom of this uh, tool space that will then update your corridor model. That could be even adding a new road and intersection. It'll just cut all that right back in on your current model. Uh, so it's really, really impressive. So I'll let that run. I think it's about done. So now we're looking at the actual corridor. Now what's funny is, is the lag time. So now that I'm picking it, if I right click and I want to go to my uh, object viewer, this is where you start to feel it, especially when you're trying to tilt it. But it's really amazing to see the detail using Corridor Easy and how it's applied back to your, right back to the, uh, the actual corridor himself. So you see I had a little overlap on one area there. All I gotta do is just pull my, my region back. So yeah, it's thinking, there we go. Yeah, so I got a little overlap there. But overall, it's uh, did a pretty major job in getting your intersections in and your design in really with, with not much effort and, and maybe even no, no knowledge of how to use a corridor. You know, maybe you don't know anything about corridors, you just know how to use this product and it really kind of threw this out there for you really quick. Uh, I would say though, it gets probably 90% of your corridor the way you want it. There's always a little bit of stuff you gotta do here and there if you, if you see something, but uh, that's still the time it took, you know, yeah, I have that little overlap in here. How hard is it just to grip at it and, and bring it back? You know, pretty easy. Pretty easy stuff at this point compared to building this whole thing out. Uh, the other thing I'm going to open up for you just so you can get a preview is what the corridor parameters actually look like. Because sometimes that's something that interests uh, the audience. So if I go to corridor properties, you'll see it's laid out exactly the way that you would do it. You got your alignment and then you got your regions. You got your alignment and your regions. And then from there, what assemblies it used, where it started and stopped. Um, the frequencies are sort of handling, being handled uh, within Corridor Easy. There's actually a uh, sampling on here and it's really applying sampling as an override in this part. Um, but from here, you can go in and you can start extracting out data off of the corridor like you normally would. If you want to try to get a datum surface or something like that, you've now got a corridor. You can go further and extract out what you need uh, on that on that model. So I think from this point, um, one, one last thing before I kind of pass everything back off uh, for Alex and then maybe we, we do a little Q&A is this is the report that came out as soon as I ran Project Assist. And so you can see where I kind of put some gibberish here in the description. So it's, it all, all of that went right back to this report. As you're scrolling through the report, there might be some things that you're trying to figure out like, well, how did it do that? So here's a situation like on line 10, a variation has been added to widen code LETW. Uh, so I was like, well, what does that mean? So you can actually click on this button here. And here it is, it just popped up. <coughs> and then you can play the clip. And, uh, you know, this clip is, variation in side to side. you know, variation. A, a minute and 15 seconds. So it kind of gives you just a simple walkthrough on variations. You know, let me go ahead and close that out. But really, really powerful tools, a lot of resources on learning how to get up to speed. Uh, to be honest, it, it doesn't take much to get up to speed with this product because it's all repetition. It's definitely way more complicated to try to do, you know, a corridor model and learn how to use corridors. Uh, this, you know, really just kind of gives you a, a good place to be 
because you get all the design profiles, you get everything that you need up front to start doing your detail to design work. And um, you, you need a lot of that up front before you can even do your corridor model. So you can see how having a lot of sort of uh, best fit stuff to kind of get you started so they can build out your model is really kind of an interesting approach to you know you achieving your final design. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to pass it back off to Alex, and I'll go ahead and get the slide back up for you. Very good. Thanks, Ryan. Nice job. Hopefully, we uh, got some interest in the folks here. Uh, shows you the power of this product. So I wanted to, as I mentioned, uh, just talk a little more about the design challenge that we have. Uh, so we did a project here as our first test where a, we did that subdivision that Ryan was showing you here. Seven roads, 10 intersections, two cul-de-sacs, three widings, one turning lane. And we did it in Civil 3D first. It took about 3.8 hours to do. Uh, we did quarter easy in 10 minutes. So if you could hit the next slide, Ryan. Uh, so what we, the feedback here is that you know, it's using the same alliance uh, alignments that we have, but it's all you just using the AI tool Project Assist, and that is very powerful. Next slide. So that's the challenge. We'll, we can send you the file if you uh, reach out to the folks at uh, Digital Drafting and uh, Alan or somebody at the will uh, get a hold of us. We can give you the uh, zip file, and then you try it if you give us the First of all, most people are doing it in under 20 minutes. You give us some feedback on it, uh, and we'll take all the feedback, uh, and um, we will get you a free subscription for one year. All right, next slide. And we have, just for this uh, webinar only, so the good folks at Digital Drafting Systems here um, will take, take the orders. It's Normally $795 for per year, a per user subscription. And, uh, but we're gonna cut it off for this first year, give you a $300 savings. So 495 and that's good until the end of February. So that's the special promo, the BDS CAD. Next slide. And then always anybody can go and download the free 30 day trial. Uh, the best thing to do is take the uh, Alan and team can also give you the link that we see here at the bottom, and uh, that'll take you right to the spot to get that downloaded for the 30-day trial. So that's open to everybody. Next slide. And that's it. Um, so at this point, Alan, do you see any questions in the question box? I don't. Yes. Yeah, we do have a couple that came in okay. here. Oh, good. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll read these back to you. So um, yeah. see how many of these we get through before three o'clock. So uh, since data is written to an external database, then stored in the DWG when it is saved, what happens during a crash? I assume your corridor easy changes are lost. No, they're not. So the um, as soon as you you know whenever you have a crash and you're kind of active in uh, Corridor Easy, you, you, that database is still existing. Uh, it's just on your local drive. So you can ping back to it and basically uh, be right back where you left off. So um, every time that you save or an auto save happens as well, uh, it, the product's been set up so that it, it also will do a pack. So there may be a little bit of a delay that you'll notice uh, whenever you do a save or anything like that, but that's the moment also when it's capturing where you're currently at in the design process. But there's a lot of safety nets, you can say, uh, to really prevent you from losing your data. Uh, that's in place. Uh, unlike in Civil 3D, if you <laughs> build something out for an hour and you just completely forgot that you have it saved and then you get a crash uh, and you're out of luck, you're, you're in luck with Corridor Easy because you do have that external database. It's not being deleted. It's just the information is 
being duplicated and, and then being packed back into your drawing. So you actually have it in two places. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question we had come in here. Can the project assist uh, using Civil 3D feature lines? Can the project assist use Civil 3D feature lines for road widenings, medians, etc., or is it only for alignments? That's a good question, and and things are actually developing. Um, it it used to be alignments or in in corridor easy you can also do profile strings so they, everything they call is a string a road string corridor or, or profile strings network strings they're they're essentially like a feature line except that it has a, a horizontal control and a vertical control um as as a plan and a profile type of thing but they've recently added in polylines so that's really powerful because now you can actually have a polyline and you can generate your, your your model to sort of target a polyline in the process. Uh, you can still also add in other uh, other elements such as elevations in the mix without it being a feature line. But uh, feature lines by themselves at the moment, no. But you can now do even polylines, which is really helpful because that's an easy feature to draw in and then target. Okay, great. Uh, do you have anything similar for pipe networks? Uh, so this is this is a good question. There, corridor easy is strictly the modeling for roads. Uh, civil site design has some things uh, for pipes, but ultimately it still turns out it's still being converted into civil 3d networks and there at the moment there's no exact hydrology package to support pushing a design out for it so i would say you know right now civil 3d is is definitely uh more powerful when it comes to the pipe network side of it than it would be on the corridor uh or not corridor easy i'm sorry civil site design side uh, the reason why you do see a package like that in civil site design is for those who have AutoCAD, who have no way of doing utilities. Uh, you know, there there is an option for them to be able to do utilities through civil site design, and that's why you see pipes in that package. Yeah, just to reiterate again, yeah, Quarter Easy does not have any pipes or anything for lot grading or things like that, parking lots. Uh, that is just subdivisions road networks corridors that's what corridor easy is you go to civil site design for those other features uh, but in some cases i think uh civil 3d has some real powerful tools for that so um, I, I do want to also add because that was good too alex you kind of you know shined a light uh on, on one of the previous questions about feature lines um remember you're still exporting it out back to civil 3d so you can still use your normal workflow and have your feature lines and then go back and attach uh you know use that as a target if you wanted to within civil 3d so you know corridor easy just got you there quickly but you can still then take that enhancement and say okay now i'm going to flip over and utilize my feature lines and do the rest in civil 3d if you wanted to so you're not really hung up on one or the other. This is an enhancement to, you know, pushing everything out quickly where, you know, Autodesk just has a problem doing that. But they're good on other areas such as, you know, I want to throw a feature line. I love feature lines. I just want to put a feature line and I want to do this. Well, you still are on Civil 3D, so you can still do that too. Very good. All right. Well, I know we're out of time. What do you think, yeah, Alan? We, yeah, we are out of time here. Um, if you guys are willing to hang out for a couple minutes, <clears throat> we can get to these last few questions. I'll just go ahead and say, uh, for those of you who do need to jump off, uh, definitely look for the recording coming to you in the next uh, hour or two here in your emails. Um, but I do have just three more questions if you guys can hang out for a few more minutes. Sure. For those oh, that want sure. to stick. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so 
Uh, the next question would be, would you please discuss best practices for data shortcuts in Corridor Easy? We may not want to store all of these objects in a single drawing. Well, um, there is data sharing, but let me see if it's available in, I mean, it, as, as far as the, on the data shortcut side, we're building a model and that model is being converted to civil 3D. So you can still data shortcut your surface that was derived by Corridor Easy, but you've converted it into civil 3D. So uh, it, your workflow really doesn't change at all in that perspective because uh, you're, you're doing the same thing. So you're just using a tool set that's building out in its method and then everything is then being converted back into civil 3D so you can continue what you commonly do with your data. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question here, this looks great for land development. Can it be made to work with highways? If so, please describe. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, a good question. So the product, you know, me to look with local roads or subdivisions. It's not meant to do any DOT type of work or anything. That's not the focus of the product. It's it's really land development and road networks found in that kind of a development. I mean, okay. I, for, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that that's the case. That's the target, but, you know, I guess depending on how long the road is, uh, if, if I had a road project and I had this tool, I'd probably, I would say, well, yeah, sure. Let me see what I can do with it. So, um, yeah. I mean, it is an ars it is a, a arsenal. Uh, it's it's just not going to have any of the F dot standards or things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It won't have that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. It, it can still calculate like super elevations and stuff like that. Though There are, some tools that, uh, that's a good question we may have to get back yeah. on that one because um uh, yeah and just on that note you know we are working on stuff and probably uh very shortly down the road here we'll be showing it on a couple of upcoming webinars things like how to address ada rants in yeah. in our product civil site design corridor easy uh, because that's a big thing these days and they're difficult and we're hearing a lot from people saying can you provide tools to help us do that so we're currently working on some stuff right now and uh, not a little too early to show it but um, we'll be coming soon uh, so that's one thing the other thing that we're very excited about is we're doing some stuff you know again with the AI uh, a thing called scripting to be able to write script files, almost like the early days of Autolisp, where you can write script uh, files to do a specific workflow, uh, workflow, and um, maybe even have things like ChatGBT help you do that. So that uh, we're we're still in the early stages of that, but we're um, we're excited that we're going to be able to do something because we we've, we've got the AI engine in there to help us do that. Okay, so perfect. That, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, I have one more. If we wanted to squeeze this one in real quick and then we can okay. uh, close off here. Do we have similar videos for developing corridors for retaining walls and ditches? Yeah, there's so many videos out there that, yes, there, there are videos out there. Uh, we would just need to probably help you hunt them down if you're looking for those specific videos because there's so many videos out there. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it all kind of goes back to like variations and, and we, we call them variations in, in corridor easy and civil site design. Uh, it's uh, it allows you to add more codes and you can add like retaining wall codes or whatever kind of codes you want to to expand your current uh, template. Um, including uh, intelligence sections too. So if you are in a cut or fill and you want your template to behave in a different way, uh, that can be uh, incorporated as well. And I want to say that that is in both 
it, obviously it's in civil site design, but it, I, I want to say I've seen intelligence sections available in Quarterly Easy, and that's that will help a lot in you know how to behave. Do I need to put a ditch if I'm in a field? Probably not. But if I'm going to cut, I probably want to put a ditch, and it has it'll be able to figure out what you need. So yeah, yeah, those are awesome. Kind of awesome. awesome. All right, perfect. So Ryan, if you want to jump over to that last slide. Yes. All right, so thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to Ryan and Alex for the presentation. Uh, I know I learned a few things. Hopefully some of you did as well. And so uh, again, if you want to take advantage of, uh, of that offer that Alex mentioned earlier, or you're interested, have questions, anything of that nature, uh, with anything to do with Corridor Easy or any of our other products and services that we provide, you can reach us here at Digital Drafting Systems at 305-445-6480 or email us at info at ddscad.com. Okay, thank you all so much for being here. Great. Thanks, Alan. Sandra, thank you. Jaime. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Appreciate it from everybody. Bye-bye.